Living in a democracy, we need to be very careful that we do not fall into the fallacy of, well, there's a lot of people doing it, it must be right. Listening to the end of our gospel today, and great crowds from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, and Judea, and from beyond the Jordan followed him. They're following him because he is the way, the truth, and the life. He's not the way, the truth, and the life because people follow him or because he is popular. St. John, in the end of our uh, first reading also, he says, they belong to the world. Accordingly, their teaching belongs to the world, and the world listens to them. We belong to God, and anyone who knows God listens to us, while anyone who does not belong to God refuses to hear us. This is how we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of deceit. So this one's a little bit more difficult, because now we're saying that if people belong to God, they will listen us, listen to us. So this isn't a lot of people, this may be one or two people, and again, the fallacy here is to think, oh, well, if they agree with me, then they must be right. St. John cautions uh, the, uh, the people that he's writing to here. He says, beloved, do not trust every spirit, but test the spirit to see whether they belong to God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Uh, when I was a younger priest, I was on vacation, I happened to be wearing my collar, I was in the airport, and a young fella came up to me and he said, oh, I can see you're a man of God. I, uh, I have studied the Bible, and, uh, you know, and, and because of that, I have a house, I have two cars, I have a boat, you know, I, I have all these riches because I followed the teaching of the gospel. And I thought to myself, we must be reading a different gospel. I don't remember that as being a, a big part of Jesus' message. And so we need to test the spirit. The person we have to work with here is ourself. I need to ask if this spirit that is inspiring me or speaking to me whether this is from God. And so uh, if I think that I'm right and I'm digging my heels in and I just, I, I need to be right, that's not from God. It doesn't bring me any peace. If I follow that thought out, I'm going to stand before Jesus. And am I going to stand before Jesus in this, you know, angry pose and say, I'm right? No. So if I test the spirit, does it line up with what Jesus taught? Uh, does it line up with the Bible? Does it line up with what the church teaches? Those are always the easy ones. But then what effect does it have on me and what effect does it have on other people? If I share this with people, am I saying this in a way that helps them to accept it? Or am I saying it in a way that makes me feel better about myself? The Spirit leads us not only what we teach, but how we teach it. How do we interact with other people in such a way that the gospel makes sense? So when St. John tells us to test the spirits, who is leading me? 
Is it leading me to Christ? Or is it leading me to me? That's always a disaster. <clears throat> it's my second time preaching that homily today. And both times, well, it's, it's kind of an insight into my, uh, my, I don't know if it's my basic fault, but one of my faults is I always think I'm right. <laughs> mea culpa, mea culpa, mea culpa. Um, but the opposite is also true, and that's not the Spirit of God. And so if, if you feel like you can't do anything, if you feel like, uh, you know, everything is falling apart, that's not God. All right? God gives us hope. He gives us peace. And, and so when we test the spirits, we have to ask God, is this what is healthy? Is this what is holy? Is this what is right?